Hey folks, welcome to Setting the Hook. We're up here in the Quarthus today. We're doing a bit of a multi-species thing. We're looking for uh, smallmouth bass, maybe some pike, and uh, maybe we'll even get into a largemouth. I'm or, or a walleye. Or a walleye, yeah. Or a musky. Or you never know, yeah. <laughs> so I'm fishing with Dave Chong. How are you, Dave? I'm awesome. Anytime we're on the water, how can go wrong, right? Exactly. So Dave, you're a, uh, you're a multi-species fisherman. You fish a lot of bass tournaments. You're a seminar speaker. You're an author. Um, what haven't you done in the fishing industry? Oh, I haven't won the Bassmasters Classic. <laughs> well, it's, it's good to have goals. <laughs> yep, we all need goals, that's for sure. <laughs> all, right. all right, we'll be right back, hopefully showing you a couple of big fish, folks. Oh, it's a big fish. There he is. Yeah. Got him. Just when you think he's ready for the net, he turns out it's just a greedy fish. That was an angler skill. <laughs> that's probably my favorite part, eh? When you feel that tap and you set the hook and you feel that solidness. But he's heavy. Tell he's been eating pretty good out there. And we got ourselves a good salmon. People travel all over the world for these fish. So uh, let's do that again. And let's face it, the Niagara River is a, is a buffet for fish. Let's get him back in the water. Setting the Hook with Brett Bochak is brought to you by Fish Envy and Live to Fish. So what we're doing right now is we're working along the shoreline here. We're, the boat's actually sitting in a little bit of weed. We got sand up top there, and then we got a little bit of rock transition in between. So we're just looking for smallmouth bass. Or you got, what, a surface bait on there, Dave? Yeah, I got a uh, Locky Craft um, Sammy on here, and it's a, uh, it's a walking bait, so it creates a little bit more commotion on top. Um, you know, hopefully draw one of those active smallies if they're around. Well, we haven't figured that out yet, so. <laughs> And then I'm just throwing a jerk bait here just to uh, give him something different to look at. Brent, there's not much happening here. Um, if the fish are around, they're not showing themselves. So I think we should make a move and maybe try a little deeper water. All right, that sounds good to me. Well, there's a variety of different kinds of weeds out here, Dave. What, uh, for smallmouth, is there a particular kind of weed you like in particular? Or? Um, I like cabbage, I like milfoil yeah. for them, generally. Um, nowadays we see a lot of uh, other invasive weeds like chara and, and I don't know, there's some other stringy weed, I don't know what they call it. But right. I, I really just don't like it. I think primarily because I just can't work, you can't work your bait through it properly. You know, I don't necessarily discount the fact that the fish use it, but if you can't get your bait through it properly, it's hard to catch fish in it. So usually milfoil and, uh, and cabbage are pretty good bets. If you have that around, there should be some fish around. Right. You know, fish are comfortable when they have something that they can kind of, they feel they're kind of hiding or long or, you know, using as ambush points. So it, it all works that way and, and plus, um, Milfoil and cabbage usually attract bait fish as well. Yep. So there's food in it for them, so. See in here, there's also another field of sand and boulders and stuff. And, but we haven't seen any fish on it, at least none that have shown them. So other than the one you had uh, kind of flash on your bait before we left the last spot. Yeah, just ready to move, throw out one more cast and we get a fish come up. 
Of course, that's what you do, right? Yeah, as soon as you see a fish, you leave. <laughs> it may be one of those days the fish are just not active and we might have to, you know, slow it down and, you know, drop shot, Ned rig, and in order to get them to go, but we'll figure it out. You know, we'll make a couple moves and, and see if we can figure out what kind of uh, mood these fish are in. So doing a lot of musky fishing, slowing it down is hard for me, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what? It's, it's kind of hard for me too. I, I like the power fish. I, I prefer to power fish, so horizontal baits is uh, my preference, but even more so than that, I love catching fish. So if that's what it takes slowing down, then that's what we're gonna do. Good size uh, tiger muskies in here, which are fish. Oh, there we go. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, there we go. There's a smallie. Whoa. Nice. Whoa. Let me get out of the way here. Let me grab that net. Whoa. <laughs> here he comes. I see his head there. Whoa, <laughs> good net job. <laughs> usually, usually I wouldn't take him from behind there, but. Well, he I was see, good. Yeah. <laughs> he was jumpy away. There you go. Yep, yeah, that's that's what we're looking for. So, you know, there are some here. You better be careful with this guy here. This thing is probably still pretty fresh, and there's a bunch of troubles around here. And you got to be a pair of pliers if you need there, Dave. I think it's okay. There, there we go. go. Yeah, now if you're fishing a tournament today, you'd probably put that one in the box, eh? Yep, that's not a bad fish. It's, uh, you know, I'd say it's not three pounds, but it's a, yeah. it's a high two, so we won't... Uh, we won't keep her out of the water too long. No, we'll get, get her, her back, back in. in. And so uh, hopefully we're on a little something here and we'll yeah. get a few more. There you go, girl. Anytime you net a fish, you always try to net them head first, right? Yes, absolutely. But in the case of a smallie, especially on a jerk bait, because you know, any any lures with treble hooks uh, on, with smallmouth bass, it's, you know, you, you stand a chance of losing them, right? So when you have a shot at netting it, and even though that fish, you took them tail first, you 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 put the net forward. Yeah. So when it actually jumped and you got them. So that was that was a really good net job. <laughs> well, I'm really thinking it wasn't job. my best net job, but it worked out okay. <laughs> <laughs> now that fish came right around where I remember I was saying there's the cabbage. Yep. So I think she was hanging around the cabbage there. We'll see as we go along down here and we run into any more. And you just got bit off. That was a pike. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> just like it came up with scissors and went. Dong! I just lost a lucky craft to a pike, and they seem to know when you have a nice Japanese bait on. They they seem to like those. Uh, but at one time there was um, there was no pike in here. It was only muskies, and um, as with all the Kawartha lakes, but slowly the. Uh, pike through the Trent Severn waterway have been making their way into all these bodies of water that we're fishing. Yeah, I think about the last three or four years, maybe five years, we're really starting to see a real influx of pike here. And one thing we're really noticing too when I'm muskie fishing was we're catching uh, tiger muskies as well as muskies and pike. Right. Well, tiger, tiger muskies are a cross between a muskie uh, and a pike, so very beautiful fish, but unfortunately they can't reproduce. Well, see our friend the loon is all around here, so I mean, what that tells us is there's bait around, right? Mm -hmm. And if there's bait around, there's going to be some fish out here feeding on them. And so far, we obviously know there was a pike at least. Yeah. Because <laughs> he's got my jerk bait now and, um, and a small and a smallie, which we got into the boat. <laughs> here, here's our friend right here. Hello, buddy. What do you want? You want us to feed you? Brent, that's one thing about smallmouth bass is typically they do hang around in schools for the most part. Yep. So when you catch one, you're probably going to find a few more around and hopefully, you know, you can catch a bunch of them. So we're going to go up here a little bit further and then we'll go back and just do that drift again and uh, see if we can't pick up another one. A little smallie. What's that for that? Nope, because she's off. Oh. <laughs> because, and there's what happens with jerk baits. Sometimes they just come off. You're never gonna land every jerk bait fish. All right. Wow. Oh, there we go. Okay. 
see if I can uh, get this one in the water this time. <laughs> John, Dave. Oh, you know, that's, uh, yeah, we were talking about that. So we just made a move back to where we had that first day. You said the sun's coming out. Let's go back up there. Yep. And I, uh, cast, you got a fish. I strongly believe when you get days like this and it's uh, been kind of overcast, we've had a bit of weather going through and such, that once you get some sun coming out, the waves coming through, that the fish, uh, the fish do turn on. I was just gonna say, he's been, uh, been putting eating. the feed back on. There you go. Well, let's, uh, let's get her back in the water. Don't need the net. Uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, but that shows you fish are becoming active. So you, uh, you fish a lot of tournaments, Dave. I do. When I, when I first met you, we were doing seminars at the uh, Niagara Sportsman Show about 10 years ago, I guess that'd be. Yeah. <laughs> and I actually called you a bass guy. And uh, up on stage, I was, I was doing musky seminars. I said, if you're a bass guy like Dave, and you looked up and you said, I'm not a bass guy. <laughs> so obviously, you do fish a lot of bass tournaments. I do. And you know what? I, I do love bass fishing. Don't get me wrong. But um, I, I love... I just love fishing, period. I, um, you know, I do consider myself more of a multi-species angler. You know, I, I actually even do a lot of pike tournaments in the spring and, and perch tournaments and the odd walleye tournament, crappie tournament. So, you know, I, I, I love fishing them all. I, I, I love to get in a little bit of river fishing here and there for, you know, steelhead and salmon. And hopefully in the, maybe next spring, we can get out in your boat early season for some lakers and, and early salmon on, uh, oh, absolutely. on the big body of water. Yeah. But I, I, I honestly, I love, I love fishing everything. I was out, well, we told you, I was out musky fishing yesterday with, uh, with a mutual friend of ours. Yeah, Jeremy Foote. Yep, and uh, that was fun, you know. I always like doing different things. I, I fish mostly bass tournaments because most of the tournaments are bass tournaments. Yeah. So if I'm gonna fish a tournament, it's, it's um, Chances are it's a bass tournament. I do, I, don't get me wrong, I do love bass fishing, but uh, I don't, we shouldn't label with people these days, right, man? No, no. <laughs> yeah. There's one. Oh, yeah. Here we go. This is, I think this is a good fish. All right. Oh, yeah. Oh, whatever it is, it's good. I don't think it's a bass. Back up the drag. Well, yeah, I can tell you it's not a bass. If it is, we might have a Ontario record here. Oh boy! Oh boy! That's got to be a musky. Oh boy! You want to bring that trolling motor up, Brett? Yes, sir. Dave, what I do is I'll probably try to land my hand at the back. Yep. Okay. There she is. Oh yeah. There she goes. Oh, well, it's a nice musky. Yep. I've been guiding for musky for the last two days and uh, we got, you know, we got fish each day, but <laughs> this is a nice fish. And you were musky fishing yourself yesterday. I was musky fishing and I never got, I, oh, I hooked one and I lost it. So this is, <laughs> this is still hooked. Um, we'll, we'll see if we can land it. Yeah. And the funny thing is we got a gentleman just up front of us there, a couple hundred yards, 300 yards or more. He's actually musky fishing. He's musky fishing. And oh, that's a beauty. <laughs> that's a beauty. <laughs> yeah, she might not be quite ready to come in yet. Uh, might be not, but. <laughs> oh. It's that, that roll there that scares me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh. I'll bring her around. Uh-oh. I'm off the motor. You see her there? Yeah, she's right here. All right. You want to come back yep. here? Sure do. Try to get this baby in the boat here. Try to guide her this way. <laughs> you know. Whoa. She doesn't like that. She doesn't like you telling her what to do. Going which way. It's... See that right in the front of the mouth? That's, that's a... 
40 plus inch fish there. See that? Every time I get close to her, she turns away. She knows. I'm guiding her this way. Oh, hey, yeah. <laughs> They just she have, does not like you. They just have so much power. She looks like a really healthy fish too. Yep, she is beautiful fish. You know what, there's no marks on her. She's got, you know, decent girth on her. Oh yeah, baby. They the pliers in my back pocket. Very important to uh, to support these fish. Yep. The last thing you want to do is be holding her up um, uh, vertical, right by the gill plate. Oh. Because what will happen then is you can hurt the stomach lining. There, there you go. She is. Beautiful Kawartha muskie. Oh, Dave, she looks long here. <laughs> You know, folks, anytime you're fishing in a place where you got a chance of catching a pike or a muskie, something that really could engulf your bait, it's always good to have release tools. I do a lot of fishing for muskie. I guide for muskie. I got my release tools in the boat all the time. It's always important to have at least a minimal set of, um, set of needle nose pliers. Quite often, these will do what you need to do. Bigger fish, especially muskie and pike, you got to get down a little farther. I have a long set of needle nose pliers. Another thing I have here is a pair of cutters. These will cut five, six, seven out hooks, no problem at all. Sometimes, especially when you're musky fishing, you have bigger hooks on there. If they're really engulfed in the musky and you can't get them out, you can get in there, you can cut those hooks without hurting the fish. You know, musky take a long time to grow to a trophy size. They make up less than 1% of our fish population out there. We wanna make sure we respect them and handle them properly. So if you can get in there, cut the hooks if you have to. Hooks are cheap. Takes a long time to grow a trophy musky. How big does it look off. now? <laughs> My perch are getting bigger. Look, this one's almost one and a half times the size of my dirt. <laughs> Where? Come on. We're fishing too shallow. Like eat something off the surface or? You know I want to throw it up. Uh, why would you right now? Fish. Yep. So I'm casting the inside. You're going to the outside there, Dave. And you've hooked up. Look at that. Oh, look at that. <laughs> what did we just say, eh? Oh, it is. There we go. Dinner. <laughs> ding, ding, ding. There it is. Kawartha gold. Walleye. There you go. That's a nice little walleye, Dave. Yep. That jerkbait uh, catches everything. Yeah, it's got walleye, muskie, bass, perch. You got it. Remember when I, years ago I said you're a bass guy? <laughs> I really got to take that back now. <laughs> there he goes, right back to the bottom. <laughs> 
Okay, time to catch a fish. All right. Get one of those on the bottom there. I'm trying. You drag it along, they should eat it, you know? You would think so. There's enough of them there. That's one thing about electronics, eh? They're great when they show you fish that you're catching. But when you're not when catching they're showing them. you fish that aren't eating. <laughs> they can be very frustrating. I think the, uh, up here the weed should end again. Yep. And uh, we'll probably get a couple more smallies there. Either somebody took a swipe or my blade hit a weed. Oh, fish. Oh, it's a little jump there. Yeah. We've been getting fish on a jerk bait. This is the first one we've hooked on a spinner bait today. Nice. Keep them down a little bit here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, look at look that. Look at that. How's that? <laughs> as soon as the pressure came off from there. Yep. Okay, that's good. Now no, we don't have to. Uh... Thanks, Dave. Nope. Yeah, I'm getting the guy treatment here. Nothing good <laughs> for me. Putting, uh, getting them out of the hook. Look right. at that. Put them on a smallie <laughs> finally. <laughs> there we go. Got a boy. I was starting to wonder what was wrong. Dave's catching yeah. all these fish and. <laughs> it's taking me a bit. Yeah, they do eat spinner baits here too. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Let's get them back in the water. We'll get another one, Dave. Yep. There's not a lot of bird movement today either, eh? No. It's very. There's not a lot going on. Like it's not a lot of geese flying or not a lot of activity or seagulls or. Yeah. I find days like this, like when you don't see other activity, fishing's tougher. Well, why don't we head back and we'll make one stop at the end there. All righty. Whereabouts where we started? Yeah. Desperation, the mother of invention. Fish. See, there's one. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Baby. We were just saying, uh, things have been a little slow. Oh, it came off. Oh! I thought I had a good hook set. That was a good one too. I was just saying that uh, the fish haven't been really aggressive today, so I put a wacky rigged worm on, and uh, right off the bat, first cast we had a fish on it. It's a lot slower presentation. Yeah. I thought I had a good hook set, but she came off. I almost looked like a genius, Dave. Almost. second there. That was a good fish too. I saw. Yeah. So Dave, we've been fishing fairly quick today. We we've thrown jerk baits, spinner baits, and that, and uh, we've came back into the spot where we actually first started this morning. You figure there would be fish here. Yeah, I thought there actually was fish in the morning. Maybe they weren't very active, and uh, for most of the day, we threw jerk baits, spinner baits, and we were trying to trigger reaction bites, and and it worked for the most part. You know, we did catch fish, but. Uh, you know, sometimes there's fish in the area and the only way to catch them is to just slow down. Mm -hmm. And you've gone to a wacky rig Senko, I've gone to a Ned rig and we both had a couple bites. Sometimes that's what you just have to do. You have to slow down and, and give the fish what they want. Oh, you idiot. Miss one? Yeah, he, I set the hook too soon. I think that's how I cast it last time. Yeah, there's a lot of panfish around here too, so we're we getting those little tap, tap, taps sometimes. I'm not really uh, hooking up with them. There's a bite. Oh, Got I it. dropped it. There he is. <laughs> oh, he's coming this way. A little one. I think I can lift this one right in. You think you can do that one? You don't need the net uh, for that I'm one? I'm good. <laughs> yep. Hey, you didn't even lose your bait. No, but uh, open your mouth there, little feller. There's the hook. Not the... Uh, not quite the size of the other ones, but you know what? That's a healthy little fish, and it's nice to see these little ones out here, eh, Dave? Yep. Yeah, it's it's always 
any body of water you go to, it's good to see uh, natural recruitment, right? Mm -hmm. You see in the younger uh, year classes. So those are our future. They have to be the big ones have to be replaced by somebody at some point. Yeah, those are our future two, three, four pounders. Yep. Yeah. There's one. Oh. Yeah. Oh, Dave, that's a nice fish. That's a good one. Yeah, it's a good one. Oh, yeah. It's a good one. Oh, yeah. Ooh, come back over this way. There we go. <laughs> He's got some attitude. He does. There we go. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, there we go. Look bigger in the water, still a good fish. Still a good fish, yeah. So we pulled up onto our last spot here, which is actually the spot where we first started, eh Dave? Yep. And uh, we've been fishing fairly quick all day. So... Uh, slow down. We slowed down. So anyways, Dave, you know what? It's getting about that time of day. So I want to thank you very much for coming out and oh, fishing with us today. My pleasure. I think, nice uh, fish you... Uh, like end the, the day with? Yeah, I was just going to say, what a pretty good way to end the day, and we'll see you next time on Setting the Hook.